And it was given unto him to wage war with the saints and defeat them. And the power was given to him over every tribe and every nation. This power killed and will kill people because of its religious beliefs. Not for breaking moral or constitutional laws, but only for not following the religious laws passed by this system that go against the laws of God. Millions of truly faithful people were killed and destroyed by the system, and more millions will as well. And then he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou judge, avenge our blood to them that dwell on earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest for a little season, until the fellow servants, also their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. The power of the Antichrist, that named itself godlike and sinless, exterminated dissent and destroyed truly faithful people that disagree with their deviations from the Bible. Massacre of St. Bartholomew, Spanish Inquisition, mass burnings of dissenting indicated between the Gospel of Jesus Christ and the historical crimes of the Middle Ages Catholic Church there is nothing in common, says the website Religion in Ukraine. One of the scholars of the 13th century says about the Inquisition in this way. The goal of the Inquisition is the destruction of heresy. Heresy cannot be destroyed without the destruction of heretics. And you can't destroy the heretics without destroying the defenders and the believers of the heresy. And this can only be achieved by two ways. Converting them into the true Catholic faith or turning their body to ashes after they would be given to the secular authorities. Henry Charles Lee History of the Inquisition in the Middle Ages. It's interesting to note that the only way for a person to get out of death penalty was to convert to the true Catholic Church. If you were Catholic, then according to the Inquisition, you were supposed to be burned. In fact, is that so-called clergy always use secular authority to put the orders to action. And the story will repeat. The secular authorities will obey the Antichrist. They will kill people not for breaking the government laws, but for breaking the religious laws that the Antichrist came up with. And for sure, go against the commandments given in the law of God. According to the data from the Catholic Church itself, killed from the hands of the Catholic Church were from 14,000 to 23,000 people. Though in the destruction of the city Béziers there were around 20,000 people killed in July 1209 during the siege of the fortress in Béziers. At that moment, Arnold Amalruch was an abbot of Citeaux and papal legate at the camp of the Crusaders, participants of the Albigoan Crusade. Quotation. When they discovered, from the admissions of some of them, that they were Catholic mingled with the heretics, they asked the abbot Arnold, so, what shall we do, for we cannot distinguish between the faithful and the heretics? The abbot like others was afraid that many, in fear of death, would pretend to be Catholics, and after their departure would return to the heresy, and is said to have replied, Kill them all, for the Lord knows them that are his. And so countless number in the town were slain. Caesarea Gesterbyski, Delegus Miracolorum. But there is another important document. On August 1209, in less than a year after the storming of Vizier, Arnold wrote a letter to Pope Inocente III, sort of event report, which was necessary, for it was believed that the massacre in the fortress went beyond the bounds of decency. So far, we have discussed with the barons to save those of the citizens who declared themselves Catholics, vagrants and other mobs suddenly rushed to the city, without time and without waiting for the order of the commander. To our surprise, they cried, to arms, to arms, and in two or three hours, breaking the mountain walls, they captured the city of Béziers. Ours did not take apart their rank, nor gender, nor rage, and killed almost 20,000 people with a sword. After this beating, the whole city was plundered and burned. This letter can be found in Petrology by Migni. Historians estimate the total fatalities of the Catholic terror to be 9.5 million people. Some historians believe that the Crusades were for defending from the talks and saving the Holy Land of Israel. But we all know from history that the goal of the Crusades were destroying some of the European cities, including the cities of Russia. In 1238, the Pope of Rome blessed the King of Sweden to crusade the land of Novgorod and promised to free the participants of the Crusade from sin. 
In 1239, the Swedes and the Germans agreed to fight together, and in 1240 started an active phase of the intrusion of Russia. Thinking that the weakened Russia under the Mongols would not fight back, Russian residents of the northwest of Russia were threatened not only by religious persecution. Officially, religious slogans were the main ones for the invasion of the Crusaders, but also complete extermination, as has already happened with many Baltic tribes. Has the Roman Catholic Church changed now? Rome says that The Church never erred, nor will it, according to the scriptures, ever err. How in this case can she recant from the principles which were used for the guidance in span of previous centuries? And here is what is said in the official documents about the head of the Roman Catholic Church. First Vatican Council, Pastor Eternus, Dogmatic Constitution, the fourth session, July 18, 1870, Chapter 4, The Pope's Unmistakable Teaching. The Pope, when he says ex cathedra, that is, when in the exercise of his duties as a teacher and pastor of all Christians, determines, by virtue of his supreme apostolic authority, that some teaching on a matter of faith and morality should be accepted by the Church, it is used with the divine help promised to him in the person of blessed Peter that infallibility which the divine redeemer favored to endow his Church with. Therefore, these definitions of the Pope are immutable excessor in themselves and not because of the consent of the Church. Canon. If someone, God forbid, has the audacity to contradict our definition, let him be excommunicated from the community of the faithful. According to this document, the Pope of Rome is declared the teacher and the shepherd of all Christians, and his decisions, announced officially ex cathedra, are infallible. All his decisions should be accepted and done without a word, and if someone will not agree with this, he then shall be excommunicated from the community of the faithful. And we have already seen in history what the Roman Catholic Church has done with the power. It will do the same when the wound is completely healed. The system of the Antichrist had received a deadly wound. And Assad, one of its heads was deadly wounded. The period of Roman Catholic system's rule before it was deadly wounded lasted 3.5 prophetic years or 42 prophetic months, or 1260 prophetic days, and a prophetic day is equal to one literal year, thus we get 1260 years. And they had 10 horns, and I looked at these horns, and one came out, and the three previous horns were uprooted in front of him. And 10 horns means that from this kingdom will arise 10 kings, and after them will arise another one, and it will demean the three kings. According to the historical data, in the 6th century, three barbarian tribes out of the ten were destroyed. In 508 AD, the king of Franks Clodwig destroyed the Visigoths on the French territory. In 533 AD, Emperor Justinian I destroyed the kingdom of Vandals, which lay on the North African territory. In 538 AD, the Ostrogoths from Italy were critically hit. A couple of years later, Ostrogoths were completely destroyed. And the exile of the third tribe was in 538 AD. And if the beginning of the rule is 538 AD, and the period of rule is 1260 years, we get the year during which the system got deadly wounded. It's 1798. The Roman Republic, a country in Italy, which was announced in February 15, 1798. The Roman Republic, an area in Italy that was announced on February 15, 1798 as a result of the intrusion of the French Republic under the command of Louis Alexander Berti. It was formed on the territory of the Papal region. The Pope of Rome, Pius VI, was exiled to France, where he died in 1799. But this deadly wound began to heal. One of his heads, as he was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast, the dragon which gave the power to the beast. And after this deadly wound, the power of the Antichrist gains its strength and power. And the healing happened due to the cooperation of the Roman Catholic system with the fascist power in Italy. That's how on February 11, 1929, 11th, 
and Benito Mussolini signed a Lateran agreement about creating a free country of Vatican inside the catcher of Italy. The system of the Antichrist is called the Great Harlot. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with golden precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hands full of abomination and filthiness in her fornication. Porphyry. Crimson sovereigns up a formal wear, wide and long cape, made of crimson silk, with the tail of a stout. Does this sound familiar? Who out of the country leaders wears it? The power of the Antichrist is shown as a rich and lush religious system of government. On the other side, this rule is filled with abomination and uncleanness of fornication. The word abomination is used in the Bible to face God's view of sin. And there is a whole list of the description of abominations of sin which appear to be part of the system of the Antichrist. The abominations which the whole world knows about. How can religion be associated with fornication and abomination? And fornication in the Bible is also associated with cheating on the spouse or cheating on God. How cheating on family everybody knows. But how can we cheat on God? The answer can be found in the Holy Bible in the Second Commandment. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. As millions of pagans hastily joined the church, they were naturally reluctant to dispose of their idol treasures. The Romans and the Greeks were so used to being surrounded by symbols of their deities. They began doing the same thing with Christianity. So many of these new converts just relabeled their idols with Christian names, like Paul, Mary, and Peter. The statue of Jupiter became a statue of Peter. And we know that because it has a sun disk right over its head that indicates that this is not Peter but it's a pagan statue that's been renamed. The representations of Isis, which is originally an Egyptian goddess but has become very Greek already, becomes essentially the representation of Mary carrying her child. You have a mother and child tradition all the way down through history. Uh, you have it in Mithraism, you have it in Babylon, you have it all the way back in Persia. It appears that Mary acquired some of the characteristics that were associated with some of these other goddesses. She wears a dark blue coat and she stands on the half moon. She is the mother of all gods. Isis carrying her son Horus. That is the image that gets a new name and now the name is Mary carrying the child Jesus. Or a depiction of the god Hermes is shown as Christ the Good Shepherd. Soon the statues of the saints and even Jesus began adorning the churches even though God clearly forbids this practice in the Ten Commandments. People continue to revere and to pray to these relabeled idols. Cursed be the men that make any graven image or molten image in abominations unto the Lord, the work of hands of craftsmen that put it in the secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. He burneth the part of fire, and he there eateth flesh. He roasted the roast and is satisfied. Yeah, he warmeth himself and saith, Aha, I'm warm, I've seen the fire. And the residue of the wrath he make a god, and the great man image. He fallen down unto it, and worshipeth it, and prayed unto it, and saith, Deliver me, for thou art is my god. They have not known, nor understood, for he hath shut their eyes. They cannot see, and their heads they cannot understand. And none considereth in his hearts, neither in the knowledge nor understanding, to say, I've burnt part of it in the fire. Yea, I also have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I've roasted flesh and eaten it, and then made the residue of abomination. Shall I fall into the stalk of a tree? The Roman Catholic Church breaks this commandment, but it also removes the law of God and teaching Christians around the world to worship idols in form of statues on painting a defying rock, a tree, a paper, the world to be engaged in spiritism, communicated with spirits of dead dead saints. They come up with the theory of the immortal soul, thus breaking the second commandment of God's law and God's decree, not to talk with the dead. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them and have similar spirits, unto wizards and feet, and mutter, Should not people seek unto their God, for the living the dead? 
And a different type of abominations in which the power of the Antichrist has been involved is, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. This morning, Catholics around the world are processing a stunning report out of Pennsylvania detailing horrific, horrific sexual, sexual abuses of children by hundreds of priests across the state of Pennsylvania. State Attorney General Josh Shapiro led the two-year-long investigation and spoke very bluntly about the church's efforts to repeatedly cover up these crimes. Attorney General Josh Shapiro made the comment on NBC's Today on Tuesday. He said he couldn't speak specifically to Pope Francis, but he has evidence that the Vatican had knowledge of the cover-up. Pope Francis has said reliable data showed about 2% of Catholic clergy are pedophiles. The Italian newspaper La Repubblica reports the Pope said priests, bishops and cardinals were among that 2%, which represents some 8,000 individuals. Jesus Christ said it clearly, if you love me, keep my commandments. I understand the astonishment of Daniel and John when they saw their in their visions the power that openly broke the Lord's commandment while positioning itself as the Church of Christ. By the way, Vatican from Latin means fortune-telling place. It is interesting to know that Satan tempted Eve through the serpent, thus the serpent became a weapon in Satan's hands to bring people into sin. But in Vatican, for some reason, they built a conference room for the Pope of Rome in the shape of a head of the serpent. Pay attention to the way the building looks like from the outside. And now, let's look at how it looks like from the inside. You think it's a coincidence? Or the Roman Catholic Church, without hiding its adherence to the tempter, is a weapon of the devil to bring all the Christians of the world into sin? The mother to all the harlots. In the letter to the bishops of the world on Saturday, September 2, 2000, the main theological advisor of Pope John Paul II, Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, who later became Pope Benedict XVI, said that it would not be correct to call the Christian churches, from Protestant to Orthodox, sisterly churches to the Catholic Church. Cardinal said that this term is sloppy terminology and it cannot be used to describe the Christian communities, who in reality did not communicate with Rome. It should always be clear that the only Holy Catholic and Apostolic Universal Church is not the sister but the mother to all churches, Cardinal says. The official Vatican website, document Dominus Jesus. But the Word of God doesn't call it the mother of all churches, but the mother of all harlots. It only touches those religious communities, churches who, like their mother harlot, break the second commandment by worshipping the idols, talking to the dead, thus engaging in spiritism. And after breaking the fourth commandment by changing the date that we worship God to Sunday, and not Saturday like God himself said during the creation of the world. Many Christians think that God said Sunday to be the holy day. But it's not true. Keeping the Sunday was set by the Catholic Church. It cannot be confirmed by the Bible. This is what the Catholic Church says about it. It is well to remind the Presbyterians, Baptists, Methodists and all other Christians that the Bible doesn't support them anywhere in the observance of Sunday. Sunday is an institution of the Roman Catholic Church and those who observe this day observe the commandment of the Catholic Church. Reason and common sense demand the acceptance of one or the other of these alternatives, either Protestantism and the keeping holy of Saturday, or Catholicity and the keeping holy of Sunday. Compromise is impossible. We observe Sunday instead of Saturday, because the Council of Laodicea transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. This video clip is not to offend the feeling or humiliate the Christians and other believers. The goal is to call the true believers not to believe the people, but believe the Word of God, comparing the teachings to the scriptures. Is this really what it says? Or if the teaching goes against the Word of God, come out of Babylon the way it says in the 18th chapter of Revelation. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of ye, my people, that ye be not be partakers in her sin, and ye not receive her plagues. God calls the people that have been given the fornication wine of Catholic Church his nation, which up to this day may not have thought about the beginning and the contradiction of the teachings about the immortal sworn worshipping on Sunday instead of Saturday with the word of God. But now the time has come to decide who do I believe more, God or the Antichrist? Whose side will I be on? Will I come out of Babylon or stay here? 
all the exposing hints using which the Bible rips off the mask of the power of the Antichrist. The system of the Antichrist is different from the previous empire, mixing government and religious power in its style of rule. According to Daniel chapter 2 and 7, the system of Antichrist appears in the spot of the mighty Roman Empire and had to appear exactly in the location of the Roman Empire. And ten horns means that this country, ten kings will appear, after which another one will rise and demean the three kings. It is called the Little Horn, which means it's a small country. The harlot sits on seven hills. The city of Rome is located on the seven hills. The power speaks arrogantly and blasphemously. The system calls itself the representative of God on the earth, calling itself sinless and holy. The Pope is not only the representative of Jesus Christ, he is Jesus Christ himself, hidden under the veil of flesh. We hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. Dreams to repeal the law of God by deleting the second commandment out of the law of God, changing the fourth and dividing the tenth commandment into two. This system destroyed the holy children of God in the times of Inquisition and the Crusades the whole world for 1260 years before it was deadly wounded in 1798 by Napoleon's general, losing its power in the world. The wound began to heal in 1929, when Pope Pius XI and fascist power in the face of Benito Mussolini signed the lateral agreement on creating a free Vatican inside the country of Italy. Parfury and Crimson the system often uses the color red, predicted by the Book of Revelation. Ostentation, wealth and luxury inherent in this system. The system gave the fornication wine to almost all the Christian denominations, but the teachings of worshipping God on Sunday instead of Saturday, worshipping idols, and false doctrines about the immortality of the soul, therefore pushing the Christians to be engaged in spiritism. The system that calls itself the Church of Christ is full of abominations and pedophilia, homosexuality and breaking the Lord's commandments. Named the mother of all harlots, the power of the Antichrist calls for all the religions to unite into one ecumenical movement under its rule, for it calls itself the mother of all churches. The power of the Antichrist, using the strength like the previous centuries with the help of the secular authorities through the police and the army, will try to force all the people to get the mark of the beast, on the forehead or on the hand, and no one without this mark will be able to buy or sell. We will talk about this in more details in our future episodes. I hope that you have no doubts left the power of the Antichrist what's described by the book of Daniel and Revelation is the Roman Catholic system, the characteristic foretold more than 2000 years ago embodied in reality. It is very important that we know that this prophecy, because it shields us from the deception, but knowing the personality of the Antichrist won't save us, the only thing that will save is knowing the personality of Jesus Christ. Accept the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ is your friend and savior. Believe in his atoning sacrifice for you, and you will get the eternal life as he promised. If you like this theme, you can find descripting answers in the bestseller book, The Great Controversy. The link will be in the description. In the next episode, we'll figure out which country plays the role of the dictator. In the near future, we'll force all the countries in the world to bow to the Antichrist. How will they try to control you and your family? Don't miss the important information. Subscribe to our channel. Watch the other videos on our channel. Write your thoughts on what you think about the power of the Antichrist. Like the video and write your comments under this video. And remember, while your heart still beats, the Almighty has big plans for you.